Okay, hi there, my name is Renee Hobbs and today's date is Wednesday, February 7th, 2018 and I'm here with the amazing students of COM 416 Propaganda at the Harrington School of Communication and Media at the University of Rhode Island. Today our, uh, our, our topic is really about the origins of propaganda and the students of COM 416 uh, read the uh, classic work by Edward Bernays, Propaganda, uh, and so that really is where we're focusing our energy today. I want to share the screen with you and uh, talk a little bit about what we're going to try to accomplish in the next uh, you know, hour or so. Uh, so here we are at the website, uh, propaganda2018.com, um, and we're here in week three, the origins of propaganda. Um, so you can see that uh, one of the things I wanted to do is comment a little bit on the work that you've uh, done so far, the work that you've accomplished uh, for this course so far. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen right now, which it should be showing the origins of propaganda. Good work. Um, so we're really asking this question, what caused propaganda to develop at the beginning of the 20th century? Um, how? Uh, did um, pioneers like Edward Bernays learn to um, uh, shape public opinion? And um, I did promise last week at the end of class that I would tell you my Edward Bernays story. Um, so I guess I'll do that right now. So when I was, um, I couldn't have been more than 26 years old. I was brand new PhD from Harvard University and I had my first job at Babson College. I was the media studies professor at Babson College. Most of my students were accounting and finance majors, eh, you know. So um, it was kind of a fun job and I got a phone call uh, back then. That was like pre-internet, right? Really, pre-internet back in the 80s, right? Um, and a professor of economics called me and said, um, I'm a friend of Edward Bernays and he's coming up from New York uh, to have dinner with me and uh, you're a new media professor. Uh, would you like to join us for dinner? And I was like, Edward Bernays? At first of all, my first response was, he's still alive. <laughs> Really tacky. Never, never do that. <laughs> never do that. Right? But anyway, so I got on my best outfit, right? And I toddled over to this uh, very, very old professor's house and his old, him and his old wife. And there is Eddie Bernays. And so the four of us had dinner in their dining room in Wellesley, Massachusetts. And like I said, it's 1986 or 1987. You guys were... I don't think you were even born then, right? So it was a long, long time ago. And he was 99 at the time and a little bit hard of hearing. And so they sat me kind of like on the side of his good ear, right? Um, but man, he was so smart. And he talked about his uncle Sigmund Freud. And he talked about his... Uh, work with the federal government in um, addressing the problem in Central America because Edward Bernays was called in to advise on public opinion relating to uh, the dictatorships in Latin America. And he talked about his work with the car companies and he reminisced about the torches of freedom right? The best story of all, right? How he got women to smoke on Easter Sunday. <laughs> and oh, all, all in all, and I kind of, because I was just a smart ass, you know, when you're in your 20s, you think you're smarter than everybody. Uh, what's wrong with me? I, I pushed him pretty hard on like a couple of topics. Uh, like I asked him whether or not he said that propaganda was contributing to democracy. You guys wrote about that in your blogs this week, right? He said propaganda contributes to democracy because it enables um, the interface between uh, people and their leaders. He didn't think that propaganda, that people could be persuaded of something that wasn't in their best interest. He didn't think that was possible. And I, uh, you know, cynical 26-year-old, I didn't know if I agreed with him on that. And so I tried to 
make some arguments about that and give some examples. When have people been propagandized to do things against their interests, right? Uh, and so we had a lively debate about that. And I remember um, being amazed at how, what a skillful communicator he was. I remember thinking how um, persuasive and effective he was and how friggin' smart he was. Uh, all in all, it was a very humbling night for a young scholar like me. I do feel like at the time, back then, it was, it was, he was kind of a little bit unfashionable. He was kind of, you know, old. And the ideas of public relations, we thought all had moved on. But over time, his work has proved to have staying power. And I think that's kind of awesome. So you guys, the 21st century public relations and communication uh, students are going to you know, extend and magnify some of the insights um, that he that he offered um, so so many years ago. Now coming up almost on one hundred years, right? So that's my Eddie Bernays story, which I think is a wonderful walk down memory lane for me. Right? <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about what you're learning. I wanted to review the tweets with you and the blog posts on the class roster. I'm very very pleased about what I'm seeing from the work that you're doing. And so students uh, who are here, Olivia, I see Jess. Um, I, I feel like um, I'm, I'm also now, Kelsey, Matthew, I'm also inviting um, those students who are watching the recording um, to uh, make sure that you can um, kind of see your work here. Now I see since I last checked, a lot more students have contributed. Remember the assignment was to pick a memorable quote, right? And that's awesome. Uh, shout out to Jana. Look at Jana's beautiful uh, way that her, um, her post on, on um, Bernays shows up because she's in, on her blog site, she's uh, found the place where you can add the, um, basically the icon for your website. That, there's a good contrast there between Jana's display and Dominique's. Do you notice? Dominique hasn't set up her little icon for her website, so. If I can interject, mine did that too, but it was the picture I added for the post itself. It oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So that's cool because that means that the template that you've used automatically embeds that. Some, some templates do that and some templates don't. Right? Yeah, it's not the exact picture from your um, blog itself. It's from the post. Awesome. So you, you can add a picture into it. That's really cool to know. So every template works a little bit differently, but I love the fact that you've got a template that does that automatically. Um, now, I did find one of these uh, quotes to really stand out. And so far, it's the only one that I retweeted to my 7,000 followers. Wow. I wonder if you can tell which one that is. Let's take a look. So I retweeted only one of the COM4 students' uh, 16 um, mm, uh, po uh, points. And let me just see if I can go back in time and see which one it is here. There it is. It is, in fact, Jana's post. Uh, only through the active energy of the intelligent few can the public at large become aware of and act upon new ideas. That is a really powerful quote from Edward uh, Bernays, and I liked it so much that I retweeted it to uh, my followers. So I was really pretty pleased to see how you were managing with the COM416 tweets um, and the blog posts. We're starting to uh, recognize how we can construct tweets that uh, communicate rich information and also uh, attract attention to be retweeted. So I'm really also thrilled to, uh, I can't wait to, I started to read these, but I'm gonna be reading more of them. Um, as of about noon, just go back over here to my stop chair. As of about noon, I made a list of students who have done the Edward Bernays blog post and then students who have not. So I've got, I see at about noon, it was about 50 50 
Um, but I'm sure that that's picking up quite a lot now this afternoon as we get closer to the deadline. Um, so I really invite you to take a look at some of these great um, uh, posts. Uh, so for instance, Patrick, uh, at Patrick's website, he had a really interesting way of um, sharing the, um, of the, of the posts. Right, and some of you guys did this by literally just answering questions one, two, three, four, five. Others of you uh, wrote um, in in a, like a slightly different way. Um, so, um, Peyton, right? So there's you guys used a bunch of different formats for um, for uh, dealing with this. For, Notice I have to kind of find where your posts are, but I find them, right? I find them. And there's her propaganda by Edward Bernays post. So what's really cool is that you guys wrestled with some big ideas in this post and um, you demonstrated to me that you, um, you, you got some ideas out of it. Everybody knows the torches of freedom story, even if you haven't read the book book by propaganda, but only people who have read the book by propaganda know about the velvet flood, right? When the Paris um, couturiers and the manufacturing houses had a too much velvet, right? And so they engaged uh, Edward Bernays to help figure out how to make velvet fashionable, right? And um, I was really glad to see, I, I was really glad to see that as well. So if, um, if, if you're one of the very few people who doesn't have a hyperlink here, it's because I haven't yet received your um, URL. That's a problem. So hopefully you guys can, uh, those, of you, those few people who are still hanging out there can get that taken care of by the way. Um, Okay. I also think one of the nice things that this first assignment illustrates is the difference between a page and a post on a blog site, right? A blog post comes up in chronological order with the most recent one at the top and then the next most recent and the next most recent and the next most recent. Next week, you're going to be posting your first page and that's your leap one assignment. It's probably a good idea for us to look at that um, uh, pretty soon. Um, but before we do, I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a um, a little bit of a viewing uh, discussion. Oh, and let me just talk a little bit. Um, I think I think you guys are. It looks like you're managing the path right pretty well. Um, do, do, do any of you have any questions or concerns about your experience in using the Pathright in the last, as of the last week? I want to make sure everybody's feeling really comfortable with this. I have a question just about yeah. how, oh, sorry. I have a question yeah. just about how the grading gets recorded. Mm -hmm. Good question. So let's take um, the example of Edward Bernays, right? So here, this, prod, this was worth, um, how much was this, this worth? This was worth 20 points, right? Mm -hmm. And so here's what I see when I go to my website. I see that most of you have completed it and some of you have not. So what I do is I go, like I showed you before, right? I, I, go, to, I go look at your actual post, I read it, okay. right? And then I make an adjustment to this, uh, this grade, right? Okay. So, because, um, uh, yeah, because that's how I do it. And so basically sometimes the computer will automatically grade and then I will go in and make some adjustments based on the quality of the content. But that's really what happens uh, to the path right, right? You are um, essentially moving through these activities um, uh, sequentially and and getting and getting points for it um, one of the things I asked you to do for this week was to read the assignment specifications for leap one mm -hmm. and since leap one is due just one week from today now I'm really counting 
on you, Jess, Meredith, Olivia, Matthew, um, to um, ask questions that might help you to be successful in eight different one. What questions do you have about this project? It's due one week from today. Can I just ask another question about the path, right? Sure. Um, how do we know, like, what time that it's due? Because, like, um, I just saw that it said, like, 15 minutes late previously, but I thought in your email that they were due at 7. Yeah. So, uh, so thank you for asking that question because, um, you know, have you ever noticed how, like, sometimes technology, like, pushes us to do something even though we don't really want to do it? Yeah. So Pathright wants me, the instructor, to set a time. And truthfully, if you get your work done by midnight tonight, I am cool. Now, after midnight tonight, it's going to be an issue. I'm not going to look at it. Yeah. Right? But if it comes in before midnight, I'm cool. Because, you know, I'm going to go to bed early tonight. And if tomorrow morning when I go deal with my grading, it's – Still not done, then tough noogies for you, right? Sure. So you shouldn't feel too nervous okay. about, yeah, I know that Pathright sends you all these like warning things, don't they? Yeah, yeah. there's also like a little icon. Um, if you kind of like ho hover your uh, mouse over it, it will show you that like, it, it says like, um, it's like doing a day or it's like, but it doesn't say like a specific time until that day of. Hey, so, man, like, I, did, I didn't know when the post is due until, uh -huh. I clicked it the day of, and then it tells me, oh, it's due at four o'clock. Hey, Matthew, so, can you do me a big, big favor? Yeah. Go down to the bottom of the page here where it says share screen. And can you show that to me? Because you guys are seeing Pathright differently than I yeah. see. I would love you to talk me through that in terms of like what you actually see. So you're going to share oh. your screen with us. Right. You see how you do that down at the bottom? Yeah. It says uh, Google Chrome. Can you see it now or no? Nope, not yet. So, oh yeah, there you go. Yep, yeah. I'm seeing it. Good show. Okay, all right. So class. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there you go. And then you're gonna, okay, cool. So if you hover just right over here. Or, yeah. All right, let's go back. Resume. So if I hover right over here, it'll say do 19 minutes ago. Uh -huh. So if you just hover over here, it'll show you, but it doesn't show you until the day of. Like it'll tell you, it won't show you the time until the day of, but I mean, like, if you just cover, hover over it, it'll say you have this many days left. Cool. Now, can you do me a favor while you're still on the path, right? Can you yeah. move forward to week four? Week four? Yeah. So go, like, skip out of this. Yeah. And then go to the next week four, which I've just opened up. Okay. And now, like, open up that page where it says show six steps. Okay. Now, when you click on one of those... Okay, got it. So it does, it gives you like a, it gives you a date that it's due, but it doesn't give you any more details than that. Yeah. Okay, cool. That, thank you for sharing your screen with me for that. That was really well, helpful. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in a panic if it's like four hours late, six hours late, after it's uh, 12 hours late, then, then I wouldn't, I would say, you know, don't, don't bother. Don't bother. Okay. Right. Don't bother to do something that if, if you haven't done it by midnight on the day that it's due, then just press on. One of the things that's cool about this class is that there's lots of ways for you to gain points. There'll be extra credit opportunities to get, gain points. So, you know, I'm definitely aware of how you're juggling lots of things and you're going to make some strategic choices. But I'm so glad you asked that question because you can see how useful it was. What other questions do you have? We're here talking about week one, which is due a week from today. What you're going to be doing with leap one is writing an essay where you identify six specific examples of propaganda from your life. Here's the perfect way to fail this assignment. You misunderstand and you think, oh, I'll use an example from the 1950s or from the 1970s or from the 2010s. And it's like, no, 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 no. This is from what you're experiencing in your life now or in the recent past. Not from high school, 
not from grade school and not from the 1990s, right? So, and it's a first person essay, right? So you're looking for examples of how you encounter these forms of propaganda, like in your life, right? And that, that's gonna be kind of exciting. You can definitely get inspired to understand where propaganda is found by scrolling down to this uh, little document here, which helps you think about propaganda in advertising, in entertainment, in government and politics, in journalism and public relations, in activism and advocacy, and in education. So that, that, that document will definitely be helpful to you. But this is a first person narrative essay. But take a look at the specifications, right? So to help you develop your ideas, use key ideas from the readings to explain why the particular examples you've selected can be defined as propaganda. Be sure to include at least two images in your blog post and where appropriate, use hyperlinks to point to information sources or other relevant content. Hey, so who in this room can tell me, what is that? Use hyperlinks. Uh, basically the same thing that allows you to uh, click on our names and then view our websites, right? Exactly. So you're going to make a hyperlink that takes me that at least two at, at, at where appropriate use hyperlinks to point to information sources or other relevant content. You know, Google determines the quality of a web page and thus its shareability by the quality of the hyperlinks. So I want to give you guys I want to give you guys lots of practice in figuring out how to make a quality hyperlink because you might not have been aware that Google automatically judges the quality of your work by the quality of your hyperlinks. So it's good to practice that, right? That's right. If you want your content to be shareable, your hyperlinks have to be quality. So make sure you include some hyperlinks where relevant to um, uh, the content that helps you develop your ideas. I am expecting that you're going to write about a thousand or two thousand words. That's about five double space pages. And the thing to look at is the criteria for evaluation. How will I grade these? Because I'll use this rubric to grade your work. First, your essay needs to provide an examination of propaganda in your own daily life. And you have to have those six examples. Then you have to, your content has to be well organized and your writing should be descriptive that helps the reader visualize the examples and understand your interpretation, right? <laughs> select propaganda that might be beneficial and you might select propaganda that might be harmful. You have to explain that, right? Why, how you interpret it. You're probably going to want to use subheads to organize your writing. Hey, what's a subhead? It's like a title within the work. Wahoo! Nailed it. Okay, you're going to want to use subheads. And you're probably going to use uh, I, uh, one or two. Now I see here it says one. One is a total minimum. What I really want you to use is two. I'll fix that up a little bit later. Um, and then most important, like this, fail, fail the assignment if you don't do this. I've made explicit reference to some, assign, some ideas from the course readings to deepen my interpretation of propaganda in my life, right? And I've used the practices of summarizing, paraphrasing, and direct quotation. I've used author date citation, and I've included a works cited list in APA format. Then you post the essay to your website under the, under the link, Leap 1, and tweeted a link to it. All right, so there's Leap 1. What questions do you have about this assignment? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're feeling good about getting that done in the next seven days. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sure, it's easy. No problem. Okay, so let's move on. I thought it would be fun to uh, watch the 
really cool video about Edward Bernays. And um, of course, there's a lot of interesting videos about Edward Bernays online, but I like this one a lot. Um, so I thought what we would do is we would, um, we would watch it in a particular way. We're gonna watch this video called How One Man Manipulated All of America, okay? But let's see if we can watch it like collaboratively. Isn't that a good way to do it? So, Olivia, I'm gonna ask you to watch part one. That's the beginning of the video to about four minutes. Kelsey and Jess, I'm gonna ask you guys to watch from about four minutes in to nine minutes. I gotta leave soon. <laughs> oh, heartbreak. Well, that's partly why I have the both of you guys working on it. So sorry. Right? And then Matthew, you and I are gonna watch part three, eight minutes and 45 to the 12 minute mark. It's a 12 minute video. So. Oh, wait, I don't have a part. Which one do I watch? Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, How did I skip over you, girl? Meredith. Oh, so Meredith, you watch part two, okay. four minutes to nine minutes. Okay, so now give me a thumbs up if you know what you're doing. Where do we We're not going to watch movie? here on the uh, Zoom, uh, right? I'm going to turn off my uh, microphone, and I'm going to turn off my video. I'm going to watch my segment. That's part three. My, my segment is part three. I'm going to watch my segment for four minutes. I'm going to make, as I watch, I'm going to make just a couple of little jottings to remember some ideas because what we're going to do is come back together and like share, right? What, what ideas is this video showcasing, right? And then when we're done talking about the ideas, I also want to talk about how this video is constructed. Like what format did it use and what techniques and what your opinion was of the format. All right, give me a thumbs up if you know what we're doing. Okay, Where now. Where do we get to this link? Say again? Where do we get to this link? Yeah. Oh, good show. There it is right there. Uh, you click on that YouTube video. Entrepreneur. You Got skip idea? the. Isn't that cute? My little sister has ideas. You skip the ad. And you go to the video, How One Man Manipulated All of America. But okay. is it like under assignments on the 416 propaganda? Oh, good question. Okay, so here we go. I, I, um, I'm going to go back and show you exactly how to do it. Here we are at the home page. Yep, home page. Today's class, week three. Oh, okay. And we're going down here to this topic right here, view and discuss. Have you found it? Yes. Okay, good show. Thumbs up if everybody's found that YouTube video that you're gonna be watching. Oh wait, can you, sh can you show me one more time? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to find it on my own and now you go No off. problem, don't find it on your own here. I got a hyperlink. There's our main page, propaganda2017.com. There's our today's day, our class page. And then like this is our, this is the overview of our class session, right? And so that's what we're going to be doing. If you're part one, you're watching the first four minutes. If you're part two, you're watching the second four minutes. And if you're part three, you're watching the third four minutes. You click on that link and it takes you to the video. Okay, now. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Okay, I think we're ready, right? So do we click out of the, do we leave the meeting? All you have to do is mute your microphone. You can just uh -huh. keep your Zoom rolling. Don't mess with your Zoom. Just see how I muted? Yeah, mute your microphone. Matthew, mute your microphone. Kelsey, yeah, mute your microphone. Good. Good job. Okay, so then now you can watch and play at your own pace. I won't hear your work, but I'll see you guys in four minutes, okay?
Okay, give me a thumbs up if you are back. Awesome, great to see it. All right, well, what, why don't we just talk our way through the, um, the three parts of this video. Who, who watched part one? And what were the big ideas that you encountered? Olivia? Um, he talks about, in the beginning, how New York City already went through two world wars and that there was a growing middle class who had more spending money than ever before. And they were able to spend their money in, in other ways. Um, and that Bernays believed that propaganda could be used um, for advertising mechanisms too, not just like to influence a war or something like that. Um, and that people are basically like stupid sheep who need a higher, a higher guy to like tell you what to do, where to go, what to buy. Cool, that's a good summary. Let's uh, hear about what were the key ideas in part two? Um, so yeah, it, he kind of like started with the whole like stupid sheep thing. It was like what he believes in. And um, so he thought that most people thought that like emotions were better than facts. So if they wanted to be persuaded, you should like um, appeal to like their desires and he said that like the people at the top will influence like the people at the bottom and it will cascade down and that um you can alter group norms and like pressure people to buy things to fit in and so that all tied into the um getting women to smoke like he knew that women um wanted to be thinner so he had like doctors say that like smoking made you thinner and that like um it was fashionable to be thin and then he also staged a parade where he hired people to smoke cigarettes outside to make it like popular okay meredith you want to add to that or elaborate or comment on the the format that he used yeah i thought it was interesting that it kind of took two campaigns for him to get smoking for women to be accepted because like that just shows kind of how deeply ingrained norms can be in us. And even with his active campaigning, it still kind of takes a lot to change it. And I also thought it was interesting that he talked about the fact that you have to advertise everywhere. Cause he said, if you're advertising apples, you're not just in competition with other apple vendors, you're in competition with everybody selling food because there's only so much mental space that you can um, restrict just for food. A key idea and very well expressed as well. Uh, Matthew, do you want to talk us through the ideas that um, uh, were presented in the last uh, bit of the video? Um, yeah, I mean, like, just kind of explained a little bit of it. But yeah, like, um, he was basically saying how uh, they were using, like, cigarettes to, like, symbolize, like, a different message in, like, in a lot of my comm classes. And um, we talk about, like, symbolization and, like, what it means and, like, representing values and um, stuff like that. And uh, for a way, it was a, it was a way for women to uh, like identify themselves. And as like um, this whole movement came up about women trying to like gain independence and like freedom and whatnot, um, it was like it played a big part. And another interesting thing that like um, caught my attention was uh, he hired like specific photographers to like take these pictures. And um, I don't know if you know who Kanye West is, but he recently kind of just did that because he has his own brand, like the Yeezy brand. And he hired like a professional or he hired photographers to go and take pictures of his wife, Kim, at a specific spot to make it to make sure that it was being portrayed in the right way. Because if if the picture was taken in the wrong way, the, the wrong quality and just like uh, it, it would have changed the perception. But because like he 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 knew the perception he wanted to make it like made it so, so much more greater and had so much more influence on the public. Yeah, superb. And I really appreciate you're making a connection between uh, Brene's uh, tactic and how it's used today. One of the things he also does in that third uh, part of the video is he, he reviews the four techniques that Brene's pioneered. Mm. The use of symbols as a substitute, uh, the appeal to unconscious desires, the normalizing of behaviors through social norms, that's what Meredith talked about. And then finally that idea they called getting into their mental space, right? That idea of filling the mental and filling the environment 
with these messages so that they are unavoidable. Um, he also mentions in the very end of that video how one good way to do that, to get into their mental space, is to use conflict and controversy. Hmm, interesting. Mm. If you want to control someone's mental space, use conflict and controversy. So I thought that was really cool. There was a strange bit to the ending though, Matthew, wasn't there? Yeah. So you want to talk a little bit about how kind of weird it got at the end? Um, the author tells us a little bit about himself, right? That how he wanted to explore it himself and how it like uh, related to, or yeah, how it like related to him and his experience, his experience with it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he basically says, you know, I'm going to, I want to try to learn more about being a propagandist myself, essentially. Um, and then he says, uh, many people ask me how I created these videos, right? These are animations, right? And he said, I right. used two tools. I used Adobe After Effects and I used Adobe Illustrator and then it becomes persuasive. If you would like to learn how to use these tools, go to the website, Skillshare, and click here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, so it's ironic. Realize at the very end, he's not just informing us about Bernays, right? Yeah. He's also yeah. persuading us. The prime example of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you might want to watch the whole video to kind of get that very skillful way in which um, uh, this young animator does it um but of course what a creative amateur right to take the book he read the book carefully we can see that for sure and he synthesized it into a tight 12 minute essay that gets at a lot of the important ideas of course i have tremendous respect for that kind of creativity you guys are going to get to exercise some of that creativity in your uh, work this semester too uh, okay, so we're getting to the very, very end. I only have a little bit of time to review with you what I'd like you to do for uh, next week. Give me a thumbs up if you can see the screen that's going to take us to the path right, right? So let's talk a little bit about next week. The biggest thing, of course, is that your leap, uh, your leap one is due, right? And um, so that's, I think, the most important thing to think about. Um, in terms of how to allocate your time for the course, but we've got a really fun bunch of things to do. Most important, right, is leap one. That's worth 150 points, uh, so it's a meaningful, a bit of an assignment. Next one, R Ryan Holiday's Trust Me, I'm Lying. Those of you guys who were with me on the first day of class <coughs> saw me introduce this book. Uh, this is the most amazing marketing book you're ever going to read. And it's going to scare you, but it's also going to make you envious. And it's also going to change the way you think about marketing. So what I'd like you to do is read part one of this book. It's a very, it sounds like a lot. It's 123 pages, but it's super, it's super readable, short sentences, very current examples, really easy to read. So choose three of the questions below and summarize and analyze from the reading, right? So actually this is kind of like an outline of the 103 pages and you, you will benefit from kind of making sure as you read that you can answer these questions. Why does Holiday call all web content blogs? What is the page view imperative? What is trading up the chain? Why is web content that is overstated, polarizing, and incomplete so effective for marketing and promotional purposes? What does Holiday mean when he says blogs are built to be sold? Ryan Holiday lies to the media. Why does he do this? What characteristics of the blog format create distortion? Holiday also recognizes that the excesses of the modern, modern blogosphere are too easy to exploit. What are some of the tricks that he describes to get attention? What are some of the short-term and long-term consequences of such strategies? Why does Holiday think that controversial content is more valuable than important content? What is Warnock's dilemma? What does Ryan Holiday think is the solution to the problem of fake news? Given his background and experience, Ryan, is Ryan Holiday trustworthy? 
in his description of his work and his activities in public relations? Why or why not? What was the most shocking story in part one? Will you be able to use any of the ideas you've learned so far in your current or future career? Why or why not? And what questions do you have after reading part one? So you can already see just by those questions how fascinating and how fun this book is gonna be. What I'd like you to do is put your answers below, right? So this week you'll be putting your answers down here on the, on the, um, on the, on the path, right? And I'd like you to share an insight on that reading, right? By sending two tweets, right? Last semester, some of the tweets caught Ryan Holiday's attention and he tweeted back to us. <laughs> Just saying. Awesome. Right? So you never know uh, who's paying attention, but of course he's a, he's a big deal in the marketing world. So we'll see if we can catch his attention. All right, that's gonna be really cool, but even more cool is watching Look Who's Back. Look Who's Back is a German language film that's available on Netflix, right? And so of course, if you don't have Netflix, you can watch free for a month. And if you have a Netflix subscription, you can. Check it out. When Adolf Hitler reawakens at the site of his former bunker 70 years later, he's mistaken for a brilliant comedian and becomes a media phenomenon. This is a comedy and it's, a brilliant comedy, um, but it's also a little bit um, scary, right? So what I'd like you to do is watch the movie, right? The absurd basis for the story is what would happen if Hitler came back to modern day Germany. And then what I'd like you to do is post a comment on the Flipgrid after you watch the movie. Consider one of the questions, one or more of the questions below, like describe a scene that was meaningful to you or comment on a character in the film that you found interesting, or consider what big ideas the filmmaker is exploring in this film, or what aspects of the film are unrealistic and realistic. Let's just, um, let's just look at the trailer um, to get a sense of why this film is such a great, what, what such a great thing to, uh, <laughs> Um, best selling book in Germany, made into a movie. Under what name shall we enter your email? Really? Adolf Hitler's already taken. How about you take another name? Take a pseudonym. The new Reich Chancellery. Say, who controls everything here when there's no propaganda ministry anymore? No, this is a pretty ungoverned network, my Fuhrer. That's good to know. How would you like to be addressed by me tonight? Call me Hitler or call me my, my Fuhrer. Okay, you got the concepts, right? It is a fun, fun a show. Your, your friends are going to love to watch it with you. Uh, but some of you probably have not used a Flipgrid before. Raise your hand if this would be the first time you're using a Flipgrid. Okay, cool. So you notice what happened. I just, I, 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 I clicked on the link 
and it took me to the Flipgrid. I'm gonna demonstrate how to make Flipgrid and you'll see how totally cool it is. It says, after viewing, describe one scene that was meaningful to you or comment on a character that was interesting or what big ideas was the filmmaker exploring. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna begin. I hit the big blue button and then it says, record your response. So it says, it reminds me what the question is and it says, record your response. Okay. So recording will start in, okay, hi, my name is Renee and I wanna to talk to you about my favorite character. Um, I thought the evil, um, truthfully, the evil TV executive was one of my favorite characters because I liked her and I hated her at the same time. And I definitely saw how she was using Hitler and Hitler was using her. And one of those moments at the very end where she sees, like she knows she's making a deal with the devil but she knows that Hitler is bringing her ratings. Um, that was really, that was a key scene for me. Okay, so I just made my flip grid. I mean, I might wanna go on and on, but I'm just demonstrating, right? Then I take Okay, a, hi, my name oh, is Renee, I can review and I wanna talk response. to you about my favorite character. I like it, it's fine. I'll take a picture. <laughs> All right, well, oh, that's not that good. I can add a sticker if I want, you know, I put my, Put my little moose heads up there. Oh, right there, there my moose heads right there, right? And, um, and uh, then I can save it. Let me see if I can figure out how to save it. And I just continue to save it. All I have to do is put my first name and my last name. I don't, don't need to put your address. Don't need to put any of that other stuff. I guess I do have to put my last name. Okay, and then I submit the video and see what happens. Right. So basically what's cool about this is like it allows, Flipgrid allows us to have like an asynchronous conversation, but there's one rule. Okay, now I need you to raise your right hand and repeat after me. This is the one rule of Flipgrid. Oh, this is good. You guys are great. I love you. <laughs> you play along with me, right? Okay, raise your right hand and swear, repeat after me. I state your name. I, Meredith. Good. You solemnly swear. <laughs> solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That before I contribute a Flipgrid of my own. That before I contribute a Flipgrid of my own. I will listen to at least two other Flipgrids that are there and respond and comment on them. I'll listen to two and respond. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got the concept, right? So help me God. So help me God. Oh, so Flipgrid is way more, Flipgrid isn't very fun. If you just post your own little comment in your own little world and walk away from it, that, it's not very useful. But Flipgrid gets really interesting when you watch the person who came to Flipgrid before you. Oh, their favorite character was that evil lady who, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you go, well, wow, Renee, that's really, you're really fucked up. That's not the favorite character. The favorite character is blah, 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 right? Because of blah, blah, blah. Or I disagree with you when you said that he, his, the most awful experience was when he did blah, 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 right? So it's actually like the more we use Flipgrid to create a real dialogue where we're like, like as if we were in a classroom talking about the movie, the way cooler Flipgrid gets to be, right? Okay, so that is Flipgrid. And now you've got the idea of how like totally cool this week's uh, work is. You guys are going to read one of the leading, you guys are going to read one of the leading um, marketing radical, I would say, one of the leading radical marketing voices out there, Ryan Holiday, and his book, Trust Me, I'm Lying. Because we're trying to address this question about how propaganda is used in social media. And these two artifact, these two things that we're doing, trust me, I'm lying, and look who's back, are really cool. Now, you can get three points if you go explore the Mind Over Media website a little bit. And you can get three points if you read the Slate review of the film, Look Who's Back, right? And of course, as you know, you guys can get six points for showing up next week, right? Wednesday, February 14th, oh, four o'clock. 
I just have a quick question. So if you can't show up, you do get the points though, if you leave the response? Exactly right. Okay. You can get your points because because showing up this way is one way to do it. But of course, you guys have already figured out that you can um, follow the instructions, right? That are on, let me, let me see if I can actually... Demonstrate. And what is the deadline for leaving that response? Is it just the end of the day? Yep. Or? So it basically all the deadlines are Wednesday. Like, okay. Wednesday, okay. Right. So for instance, some of you students weren't able to participate in our live conversation last week. Here, here's our page for that. But I see that lots of you left comments at the bottom of the screen and I sometimes responded to you. Right. So here are nine comments from M Madison. You guys, I asked you to give me an example of propaganda and you did. Madison, there you are, Meredith, mm -hmm. right? And wow, what a great response. And um, Michaela, right, who used a United for Peace and Jana. And so, yes, absolutely. So mm -hmm. if you can't uh, hang out with us on the uh, live chat, you uh, complete the task, you watch the video first, then you mm -hmm. can task. But I think probably now you guys get a really good understanding of why uh, you can't really do well in this class without actually watching the video because that's where like we're trying to do some of not only like what to do and how to do it, but some of the synthesis of the big ideas that are coming forward in this class. And I think that's the real point, right? Is we're taking what we're reading and viewing and we're trying to synthesize it into stuff we can use. Because let's be honest, you're going to be experts in propaganda in just 10 minutes, right? <laughs> and that means you're going to know more than 99% of everybody in the state of Rhode Island on a topic that's kind of relevant to the world we live in. So that being said, it's time for us to go. Before I let you go, do you have any urgent questions that need to be answered? No, because you're cool, because you did it. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. So Meredith, Olivia, Jess, Matthew, Thanks for joining me. We'll wave goodbye and we'll Thank see you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right. Bye now. Thanks for joining. Bye bye.